So what's going on guys, it's GM, it's Reboxing, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel before you click on to any of the videos, also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions on what I'm saying in any of the videos, like always, it's appreciated if you guys could drop me a quick sub to on my channel. So I'm going to talk about the Monaco card that happened last night on Sky Sports, match room put on a show in Monaco and I didn't get to catch this card live because I went out with my mates and had a few drinks and that so I managed to catch it when I got home. And to be honest, I didn't really miss much, did I? Because this card was shit. Like, there was about 50 people in the casino or wherever this fight, where these fights were happening. Like, it just wasn't a great card and the fights weren't great either. I'm going to start off with Derek Chisora losing the majority decision to Agat Caballel. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it, Caballel. And Derek Chisora just didn't do enough, did he? He just went in there, didn't really get up for the fight. Just, just didn't get up for it, did he? He just... Looked out of shape, he was out of shape, he was what, 254 pounds, and I've always felt that Derek Chisora was a lot better when he weighed about 240 pounds, you know what I mean, when he was going on them run of fights after he lost to David Hay when he fought Malik Scott and when he won the European title off Gerber and stuff like that. So yeah, Derek Chisora just looked out of shape, 254 pounds, and Caballel, he's not a world beater or anything like that, he looks like a good European level fighter. But he was just doing movement and just outworking Derek Tazora in there and landing the clean, effective shots on Derek Tazora, some hard shots. Nothing really hurt Derek Tazora or anything like that, but Derek Tazora just couldn't really get anything back on Caballel when Caballel managed to pick up the rounds. Derek Tazora tried late on, but it just wasn't enough. Caballel had already won the fight and... Yeah, the scorecards, in my opinion, were a bit weird. Like, one judge had it a draw, another judge had it 115, 113, another judge had it 115, 114. So, I had it wider than that. I had Caballo winning by at least three rounds. So, yeah, them scorecards were a bit wide, especially the draw. Like, that, that fight wasn't a draw. Derek just already lost that fight. He just didn't do enough. You know what I mean? And the big fight with Dillian White looks out the window now for Derek Tazora. But at the end of the day, I don't understand how he'd sign this deal with match room and then not get up for these fights, you know what I'm saying, but is he just looking for a few paydays, Derek Tazora, and then calling it a day, or is he just going to be fighting lower level opposition, because Derek Tazora is a gatekeeper, you know what I mean, in the heavyweight division, he's never going to be a world champion, but he's a good step up, you know what I mean, for up and coming fighters, he's a good step up, Derek Tazora, like Caballero was what, 15 fights into his career, and fighting someone like Derek Tazora is a good fight in your 15th fight, you know what I mean, so... Yeah, Derek Tazora just didn't really show up, did he? And Caballero managed to win the fight easily, even though the scorecards didn't suggest it. So, yeah, um, Scott Quigg fought a guy. Well, he managed to stop a Ukrainian fighter called Oleg Yefimovich or something like that. Yeah, Yefimovich, that was it. And, yeah, this Ukrainian fighter, he's, what, 36 years old. He looked like a decent boxer in there. He's European level that showed in the ring but he wasn't anything special and Scott Quigg I think knew that and he just went in there and just went for broke really just went to knock this guy out and he dominated all the rounds landing hard power shots on Yemifovic and yeah the referee in the sixth round stopped the fight because he just felt that Yemifovic was just taking too many clean shots and not really doing much back I felt the stoppage was a little premature you know what I mean but at the end of the day I think that fight was only going to go one way and I think that was Yefimovic ending up on his back or getting really hurt and stopped. So I think the referee did him a favour. He was taking punishment. He wasn't really doing anything back to Scott Quigg. Scott Quigg was just bullying him in there. And yeah, good win for Scott Quigg. It was a decent performance. And it was a WBA title eliminator. The WBA champion is Leo Santa Cruz. Are they going in for that fight? Scott Quigg and Santa Cruz. I think that could be an interesting fight. I'd be favouring Santa Cruz in the fight. But yeah, I think Scott Quigg needs to be in some big fights, you know what I mean, because he's a lot better than these European level fighters that he's been fighting, so, yeah, um, also on the card, you had Jamie McDonnell against Liberar Salise, and that fight ended in a no decision after a head clash in the third round, this was a bit of a disappointment because, obviously, we wanted to see a decisive winner because in the last fight, everyone felt that Salis won the fight and he didn't get the decision against McDonald and now 
and McDonald at the same time was trying to prove that he is the better fighter and this time around he was going to win decisively and stuff like that. Like both men wanted to win decisively. But Jamie McDonald started off alright, he was on the back foot and he was landing some decent jabs on Solis. Solis was managing to land some good hooks on Jamie McDonald. He was just coming forward, you know what I mean? He was a smaller fighter in there because Jamie McDonald is a very tall bantamweight. So what does Jamie McDonald do now? Does he move up to super bantamweight? Apparently that's what he wants to do. His promoter Reddy Hearn doesn't seem too keen on it though because he feels there's not many big fights at super bantamweight because ever since Santa Cruz, Quig and Frampton moved up, that division has gone very, very quiet. So, I don't know. Actually, you know what? That might be better for Jamie McDonald now that the division is a little bit weaker. Because I feel if he would have stepped up and faced somebody like a quick Frampton or Santa Cruz, I don't think it would have ended well for him. Also, they're talking about him moving to featherweight. I think that would be a bad decision. I don't think he has to punch power, really, to affect anyone at featherweight. He's a decent boxer, Jamie McDonald. He's tricky, he's awkward, but... Nah, I just don't really see him having much success at featherweight. Super bantamweight, maybe. We'll just have to wait and see about Jamie McDonald. And also we had Dimitri Bivol in the main event, actually, against Trent Broadhurst for the WBA World Light Heavyweight title. And this was a mismatch, weren't it? Like, when this fight was announced, Bivol was fighting for the world title in the city. He was fighting a guy called Trent Broadhurst. I'd never even heard of the guy. He was some obscure Australian fighter with a padded record. Managed to get himself a high ranking in the WBA. And basically the first big shot that Bivol landed, he knocked Broadhurst out with. You know what I mean? Like, Bivol's one of them fighters. He is very explosive. Like, he'll just land a big hard shot when you're not expecting it. But he's a good boxer as well. Very good amateur pedigree, Dimitri Bivol. You know what I mean? So, he's a real danger in the light heavyweight division and he's definitely one to watch. Like, Badu Jack vacated his WBA title instead of fighting Bivol because I think he felt that fight would be a very tough fight. And he's one of these fighters, Bivol, because he hasn't really got any major promotion backing him, even though he was on a matchroom card tonight, so I don't know what that suggests for his future. But because of that, he's very high risk, no reward. He's one of them... I don't need him kind of fighters, you know what I mean? Fighters look at him like, oh, I don't need him. I don't need him in my life, you know what I mean? Because he's very dangerous and a very good fighter. And at the same time, you're not really going to get anything for fighting him. So, yeah, hopefully Bivol manages to get some promotion behind him and builds himself up and then maybe he'll get these fights against the Badu Jacks or the Kovalevs or the Baturbiyevs in the division. I think the light heavyweight division... It's going to be a division that's going to look really good um, soon because obviously Andre Ward has vacated his belts. Um, Baturbi has fight, fighting for the vacant IBF title next week and Kovalev's fighting for the vacant WBO title on um, November 25th against Sobranski. So, yeah, light heavyweight division, very interesting. And Bivol is definitely a name to watch in it. So, yeah, basically, this is me breaking down this card. Like I said, it wasn't a great card, pretty shit. The fighters did what they had to do. The McDonald fight, disappointing. Quig did what he had to do, basically. And Derek Chisora just didn't really get up for it, did he? And Dimitri Bivol, he just rolls on now with a world title. So, yeah, comment below in the comment section. It's JM Speedboxing.